Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. Um, this one is directed at my fellow Christians. Please guys, stop denying evolution and saying things like the earth is only 6,000 years old. It makes all of us Christians look absolutely ridiculous. Now to 99.98% of scientists in the world, evolution has been proven beyond all reasonable doubt. So to put this in perspective, there are four times more historians that believe the Holocaust never happened than there are scientists who reject evolution. So, if everybody who's extremely educated on a subject feels that way, and it happens to be supported by every single shred of empirical evidence that we have, the odds are it's likely true. Belief in persistence in things like a 6,000 year old earth and creationism really do hurt um, Christianity for quite a few reasons. Now, put yourself on the opposite side of the spectrum. Imagine somebody approaches you about a religion. They tell you that the earth is hollow, and how do they know that? Because they have a book that's written by God that is completely infallible, and it says that. I mean, sure, those people know absolutely nothing about the earth, geography, geometry, anything like that whatsoever, yet they're still convinced that the earth is hollow because the Bible says so. I mean, to anybody else, that's absolutely ridiculous, and would immediately lead most logical people to just assume the person is a nut job and never join that religion. Same thing applies to Christianity. When you go around saying things like that and you're profoundly ignorant on the subject, it makes you look like an idiot and it reflects negatively on our religion. Okay, so the clip that I'm about to show you guys now is from an actual creationist video. To anybody with really any scientific training whatsoever who, or who knows anything about evolution or natural processes, this is an absolutely just blunderous comical video. Things like this really, really hurt all of our credibility to the free thinking world and in the scientific community especially. How can we be taken seriously when we put stuff like this out? Evolution teaches that energy such as lightning or heat plus matter can occasionally create new life. Yet our entire food industry rests on the fact that this can never happen. If we examine a jar of peanut butter, it contains matter and is exposed to light and heat. But we never find new life inside unless an outside life contaminates it. If the theory of evolution was viable, then I should, occasionally, by subjecting this to energy, end up having new life. Now we go down to the store and um, if, if I open this jar of peanut butter, maybe not often, but on some occasion, I should find new life inside. And so, when we open the jar of peanut butter, we look in there, there's no new life. And, I, and, and aren't you glad, okay? Now, um, you may smile at this, but hopefully you'll never forget it, because you and I conduct uh, collectively, over a billion experiments every year, and we've done that for virtually a hundred years, and we never encounter new life. In fact, the entire food industry of the world depends on the fact that evolution... And I'm just going to leave that point at that, because that video says much more than I ever could. The second thing is hypocrisy and the arrogance of a lot of these creationists. Imagine that you don't know anything about cars and your car breaks down. You go to an enormous mechanic shop. Mechanics from all across the country are there, numbering half a million in total. Now all of them look at your car and unanimously agree it's your alternator. Now despite you having absolutely no mechanical training, you refuse to accept that as the answer. So they hold up your alternator, which is completely fried and looks like this. You proceed to tell them, nope, that's not the problem. Now, perplexed, they ask you why you feel that. You tell them that it can't possibly be the alternator because your tires had full air pressure. Shocked, they reply, what? I mean, tires have absolutely nothing to do with an alternator. But despite knowing nothing about cars, you're furious. You take your car elsewhere to one of the three mechanics in the state <laughs> who are not at the garage with the others. After all, even though you have no training whatsoever, you know better. After all, you pass the third grade and you don't have to take shit from anyone. Now this is the ultimate display of arrogance.
Creationists, often armed with only a high school level education in biology, feel that they are correct, and without knowing any evidence, overrule brilliant scientists, most of whom have spent their entire lives studying this one discipline, and most of whom, coincidentally, 60% believe in God. Now, can you imagine asserting that hundreds of independent dating methods, all giving the same incorrect answer, off by a factor of a million, and you, despite knowing nothing about science, is correct? Off by a million, that's not necessarily trivial. Richard Dawkins, who I'm actually not very fond of in particular, made a good point, though, when he said that they are off by a factor of a million. That's like calculating the distance from San Francisco to New York as 27 feet. This is not a small error. Assuming that you are right, knowing nothing, and all these lifelong scientists and people who have profoundly studied this field are wrong is just the ultimate in arrogance, and it's frankly absurd. It makes all of us look like fools, and frankly, would you want to join a religion where everybody is that off? I know I wouldn't. Finally, there's the whole dishonesty aspect of the situation. And this is one of the problems that I have with creationists, one of the biggest problems, is that the crowd claiming the moral high ground is utterly dishonest and their tactics are completely immoral. Their entire argument revolves around blatantly misquoting scientists, which is bearing false witness, by the way, creating the false representation the scientific community is divided, and deliberately using data contrary to its proper use to fit their ideas. As a good example of bearing false witness, one has to really look no further than Darwin's quote regarding the eye. He said, and I quote, to suppose that the eye could have evolved formed by natural selection seemed, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. Now what creationists fail to cite are the following 15 pages where Darwin goes on to explain exactly how the eye could have evolved. This is a perfect example of taking a quote out of context and manipulating it to support your agenda. Furthermore, who cares? Science has actually come a long way in the past 150 years. Now, my other example of creationist dishonesty is using data contrary to its purpose. Now, this can easily be seen in many of the supposed problems of carbon dating and radiometric dating in general. Well, carbon dating has limitations. Scientists know these limitations, and you won't use a tool when the limitations apply. Since carbon-14 dating is only used up to 50,000 years or so, it's no surprise that when you test a rock that's 10 times as old as the maximum range, you're going to get a bogus result. There's a reason scientists don't test these, and there's a reason these limitations are in place. That's like trying to microwave a burrito in your VCR, and because it doesn't heat up, claiming that all VCRs are completely useless. So, in summation, it's a combination of the arrogance, the blatant dishonesty, and the damage to the credibility of Christianity as a whole that really irks me so much about creationism. Members of any group that are engaging in borderline retarded acts are a negative reflection of the group as a whole. So it's time that we stop the ignorance, stop the stubbornness, open our eyes, because you guys are making us look like zealots, and frankly I'm tired of being on the atheist side of arguments. Thanks for listening.